Okay, so we've added the orthovanillin and the toluidine. <laughs> okay, the toluidine is this brown over here, and you can kind of see a little bit of this yellow over here. That's the orthovanillin. Okay, this is what we call a neat reaction, and so this is really cool. Okay, the amine and the aldehyde have melting points that are very close to room temperature. We're at about 40 or 56 degrees. And so when we mix them together, we make an impurity, an impure solid. And so the resulting melting point of the mixture is lower. This allows us to do what is called a neat reaction. And so what's gonna happen here is Karen's gonna go ahead and stir this up for us. And we're gonna stir this and we're gonna see this orange color appear. This orange color is the imine that is being formed by the corresponding reaction. So that's this guy right here okay and again you can see how i'm completely conjugated just like we saw in the aldol condensation lab we're seeing total conjug conjugation result in a very drastic color change to rowdy orange go runners <laughs> okay karen's been stirring this for a while until it gets to this powdery consistency okay and so what we're looking at here is we're looking at full conversion to the imine okay at this point or a little bit after this, we're going to take a melting point and an NMR. That is one of the NMRs that will be emailed out to you of the intermediate imine product. Okay, so we finished forming the imine. We added our 15 mils of ethanol, okay? The imine didn't dissolve because it's, it's, it's pretty nonpolar, okay? But now we're gonna do the actual reductive amination portion so I'm gonna set this up over here, put it on the hot plate, not the hot plate, but stir it. And then we're gonna do the reduction with sodium borohydride. Point, Robert is gonna go ahead and, Roberto, I'm sorry, is gonna go ahead and add the sodium borohydride. It's going to add the hydride to the double bond. And as a result of that, we're going to lose conjugation. And so what you can see is how the color is getting lighter and lighter, okay? And so once we break conjugation, and this is gonna take about a minute or two, and we're forming that intermediate ion, that intermediate ion is non-conjugated and colorless. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep adding sodium borohydride until all the orange is gone. So when you do your percent yield calculation, you will not be using sodium borohydride because it'll be assumed to be an excess. Now you can see that our reaction mixture has lost all of its orange color, which means we've had complete reduction of all the imine. And so now we're gonna add our source of proton in from uh, sodium borohydride, I'm sorry, from acetic acid. So Karen's adding this now slowly. So we have some unreacted sodium borohydride in there, obviously. So a little bit of hydrogen gas formation, which is kind of cool, um, as long as it's under control and doesn't screw up the last hour of your life. So, yeah, I think, go ahead, I think you're good now. Yeah, it's all gone. And so, yeah, so that's a good way to know if you're done with, a, if you have any excess sodium borohydride. So now we've protonated, and this is the, this is the amination product, okay? So what we have here is we have a secondary amine. Now, amines are very difficult to isolate. We can't put them on a column because they'll stick to the column, okay? They're hard to selectively ionize because we have other inorganic compounds in here that are also gonna form ions. So extracting this would be very difficult. And so this is the second product that we've made, but we're not gonna isolate this product because of the difficulties in the isolation. We're gonna let this stir for about five minutes, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna isolate this. Once we isolate this, we're gonna form an amide. The amide will take away the hydrogen bonding capabilities that the amine has, causing this to become a very nonpolar compound. Now that we have a nonpolar compound, we can go ahead and use water solubility to help us isolate this compound. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and add the uh, acetic anhydride. This is for the isolation part. After that, we're gonna heat it to a gentle reflux for about 10 minutes, okay? And so this will be the isolation part of the reaction. And so this is the final step of the chemical reaction. I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the condenser. Okay, after Karen's done. Okay, remember it's always water against gravity. 
I've done this a million times. Well, not quite because the semester was cut short. Okay, turn on the water and turn on the heat. Okay, okay so now the uh, refluxing for 10 minutes has completed. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the heat. I'm gonna allow my round bottom flask to cool before I start to touch it. And then we're going to put it into the ice cold water and do the filtration. Okay, so the reaction, temp uh, reaction mixture is cold to room temperature, so I'm gonna remove it okay, from the condenser. And due to the non-polarity of the amide that we just formed, I'm going to very slowly pour it into this chilled water and it's going to very, it's going to immediately precipitate out. So you can kind of see how I have that milky film in there. Okay, that's my product. That's my product precipitating out. Any unreacted ions are gonna stay in the water solution, okay? Doesn't look like we have a whole lot there, but we actually, that's a pretty good yield to be fair, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and stick it back in this ice bath for about 10 minutes. Okay, after that, we're gonna filter it, you know, dry it like we always do. Okay, so now we've done our 10 minutes. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna filter this out. So we can get our product. Okay, pouring it slowly. The crystals that we form here are relatively fine, so if Karen dumps it in too quickly, what we'll see is we'll see the filter paper get um, clogged and then it just becomes a nightmare to get it off, okay? And so, again, it looks like some of it went through the filter paper, which is not unusual. But if you look over, you can see that there actually are some crystals on the filter. Okay, so now we've got the crystals We've been filtering for a little bit. We're gonna take them off the filter paper, like we always do. We're gonna go ahead and put them under the lamp on our watch glass, like, again, we always do. There's Karen, she getting a watch glass there. Oh, fuck up. Bleep, 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 that was bleep, hot. That was bleep. Hot. <laughs> Karen burnt herself because you know why? Cold glass looks exactly like hot glass. <laughs> and then we're coming out and getting the crystals. Okay, well, it's hard to see. Her hand is in the way. That's not like a horrible yield. Okay, and so again, we're going to let these dry. We're going to send you guys out an NMR of the final Amid product. So for this particular reaction, you're going to have to comment about the NMR on the imine, the amide, and the melting point of both the imine and the amide. Something to keep in mind, the melting point of the amide, I'm sorry, of the imine, hey, somebody take this, the melting point of the imine is 102 degrees. Now, remember, that was the orange compound we made at the beginning, okay? And so it's got a melting point of 102 to 103. We did not purify this compound. Okay. And so if you're thinking about the melting point of this, most likely this is going to be depressed and broadened. Why? Because we didn't do a purification step with this. Whereas our final product, the amid, we did purify. So we would expect this melting point to be sharp and close to literature value. We would expect this melting point to be broad and depressed.